What is it about television and our obsession with having a good show go on forever? Is it our fear of impermanence? A need to have a familiar friend that's always there to make us laugh? Well, whatever it is, it's one of the strangest phenomena that plagues the better half of almost all of our television and films in this current media landscape. It's what drives shows that have had absolute Kino rating, like The Simpsons, to fall from grace and have an entire season driven by celebrity cameos. Recently, the writers have decided to put some of the soul back into the show, but that doesn't quite make up for the nearly dead seasons that led up to it. So the question I ultimately raise here after all that classical YouTube video essays ramble is whether Smiling Friends is potentially a show with the staying power and freshness of a show like South Park. Put a pin on that for later. Or is it doomed to go stale like its contemporary Rick and Morty? With shows like The Simpsons, Family Guy, and even The Walking Dead, which has become a literal walking corpse these days, it certainly isn't easy for me to say anything compelling to dispel the very real fears people have that Smiling Friends might lose its appeal if given multiple seasons in the future. Yet, I'm here to do just that, because... Yeah, I don't know, okay? I love my voice. I Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more Smiling Friends related content. It's a quick and easy way of supporting our tiny channel on YouTube. If you feel like supporting the channel further, suggest us some ideas for future video essays over at buymeacoffee.com. Link in the description below. Now without further ado, let's get back to the video. Despite what the nitpickers of this season might say, Smiling Friends Season 2 was a spectacular showcase of various artists who brought their A-game to captivate a wide audience. While it might not have the explosive ending we all hoped it for like the previous season's episode Charlie Dies, which featured Gilbert Gottfried, it was still an overall pretty hilarious episode, blessing us with more baby bu- <coughs> I mean, Master Shake's voice actor, who was, in my books, a damn fine cameo. Smiling Friends bring back old alumni from Adult Swim's Days of Yore is something I greatly appreciate, especially with the voice actor of Brack from Space Ghost Coast to Coast and the Brack show literally working as a UPS driver getting bit by dogs. That's a thing, look it up, it's genuinely unfortunate. This season, perhaps more so than season one, really showed what makes the show special and why I believe it has legs to stand for many more seasons without going stale. Very similar to my favorite show, Joe Parrot Talks With You. Hey, by the way, I made a video on that too if you want to give it some support. Its second season, while perhaps not as iconic as its first season, made a solid sophomore effort at showing what it could be. While both shows might not have been non-stop laugh factories in their second outings, they both flexed exactly what made them special to begin with. In the case of Joe Parra, it meant dropping its oddly sullen yet hilarious style of showcasing Joe's somewhat lonely life in favor of branching out and giving him more to do with a girlfriend and friends within his community. It became even more so a show that encompassed an odd comfort in the familiar we often ignore every day, but this time without that undertone of sadness the first season had, giving the show a greater sense of community and optimism. Whereas Smiling Friends' true charm, outside of its hilarious writing, is its truly inspirational habit of reaching out to all artists, large and small, YouTube or television, be it the voice of a famous Dick the Birthday Boy Rich Evans, the hilariously bizarre stylings of Mark M, or the absolutely unhinged messiness of Joel Haver from YouTube, Smiley Friends never hesitates to utilize any artist talents to form an entire episode's runtime, or even for a quick gag. I think there are two definite reasons for why Smiling Friends can stick around for much longer. My first reason is as the Simpsons gag says. Have no fears, we've got stories for years Like, Marge becomes a robot How about a crazy wedding Where something happens and do 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 while that gag feels entirely out of character for the Simpsons level of humor, I could literally see Charlie becoming a robot. Hell, the crazy wedding bit literally happened in this past season, and it was great. It's a show that can combine just about any number of weird ideas, animations, and cameos to tell 10-minute episodes that feel like roller coasters of artistic experience. One of the clear motives in keeping it going is for Michael and Zach to stretch their creative muscles as much as they possibly can in terms of animation collaboration, wacky and out there writing that doesn't depend on the tired American family trope that's been done to death, while a show like Rick and Morty fell into the pitfall of teasing lore and continuity, while also spitting on its audience who was begging for that, Smiling Friends, above all else, strives just to 
make its audience laugh and cheer at the creative talents they brought on board for whatever weirdo set piece they've crafted, despite what even self-important dweebs like me say. The second reason is that Smiling Friends' duo of writers are honest-to-god geniuses, not too different from Trey Parker and Matt Stone. At least, that's what they're shaping up to be as of now. It's still a little too early to say for sure, as a number of dramas could unfold behind the scenes before their third season rolls in. However, that seems fairly unlikely, as the two are like a weird homogenous blob of creativity that works perfectly in tandem with one another. As long as Smiling Friends continues with these two at the heart of the show, I have very little doubt that it will lose steam anytime soon, as both know exactly what the goal of their show is, and certainly don't hide it. While there may be the occasion satirical jabs and philosophical musings about attaining happiness, the creators have stated that they view the show as a light-hearted throwback to the days of Spongebob and Ren and Stimpy. With that in mind, it's hard to imagine the show deviating from that path and falling apart due to a lack of self-awareness, potentially becoming the next Rick and Morty, a fate ultimately worse than death. As with the influx of memes about it being too deep for you and the whole Szechuan sauce debacle that the internet has chosen to never forget, ultimately led it to becoming a piece of pop culture that when mentioned evokes thoughts of cringe. And while the two have said they don't want the show to go on forever, they both seem to believe that it has a pretty long life ahead of it, where they can flesh out far more ideas and characters in unorthodox ways. Because as long as they keep pushing the envelope creatively with bringing in new styles and artists for the show, I have absolutely no doubt that Smiling Friends will remain relevant within popular culture, and hopefully not for all the negatives that Rick and Morty came to be, not just surrounding the discourse about the show's writing choices. Ultimately, there's no telling whether Smiling Friends will have enough steam in the tank to rise to the levels of hype that Rick and Morty had during the height of televised content. But if there's one thing I hope for, it's that both Zack and Michael continue to have as much fun crafting the show for as long as possible. If anything, I hope it follows in the footsteps of previous greats like Space Ghost Coast to Coast and Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and less like Rick and Morty. Because I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'd rather we avoid another Szechuan situation with smiling friends.